Hello and good morning. Alright, so I did a little bit of testing, moved some stuff around. Hopefully this is working right now. So without any further ado, let's just uh, get this thing started. Basically, uh, if you were like me, you probably wondered at some point what would happen if you turn, you know, New Vegas into a roguelike. And basically, there have been a lot of mods here and there. I mean, most of these were working back in like... Um, Friggin' 2015 or whatever. Um, it's been a few years since I, uh, since I tried doing a series of this. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's a thing with a very, uh, very good format for being turned into a roguelike. As strange as that sounds. Because basically the entire game is functionally like, just, you have a start point, you have an end point, and then just a big friggin' wide open thing in between. And now somebody's gonna lose their face. And it's just the coolest thing. You can't actually get up on that sign, by the way. And there's nobody actually up there when you go to that sign. Also, there is no way that guy would still be using a varmint rifle. He'd probably have a laser RCW. But, uh, whatever. And these guys are a-holes. And these guys are also a-holes, but this part didn't happen. So we're going to skip it. Now, uh, here's basically how this works. Uh, essentially, each of these uh, each of these different runs or whatever else is just going to be kind of like a short story, more or less. So, somebody recommends a character, for, for example. Essentially, the idea would be to remake that character as accurately as possible. Um, essentially, come up with a goal of some description. And then try to uh, try to accomplish it uh, within uh, whatever the rules are. And there's some mods that can be added, you know, here and there to create certain scenarios. Like if you wanted it to be happening in the middle of a friggin' zombie apocalypse with infections and everything else going on, there's a mod for that. <laughs> there's actually a very good mod for that. Um, like to the point of people turning and everything else. It's it's really cool. Uh, there's basically a mod for everything. Um, the zombies are just the most generic one, but there's, I mean, if you want ones where you basically have friggin' like aliens invading all over the place, you have that. If you want ones where basically there's nothing left of the world, there's, there's that too. Pretty much anything at this point, it has a mod. So, hell, you can get flyable helicopters and drivable cars and everything, it's fantastic. But alright, let's go over these starting mods just to go over them. So this is pretty much a redo of the suite. Uh, obviously with each different character, the approach to different things is going to happen. Uh, the Lucky 38 suite is basically your kind of default home that you... Under most routes, you can't avoid getting it. Um, basically it's just... It, by default, it's like five rooms, more or less. It's actually a pretty, a pretty low-key place. But that's where all of your companions would be sent to and stuff like that. It's a pretty central location. It's unfortunate that it's behind two loading doors, but whatever. You know, they they tried. They tried. Um, it's uh, personally, I really like the base version. I just loved how low key it was. But there's there's quite a few homes that you can get. This is just one of them. Uh, but this one just makes it really worth the two loading doors. It turns it into a friggin' penthouse amazingness thing. I think it even has the option for teleporting all over the place. It's awesome. Awesome. Um, IWS, uh, this basically just means that there's more stuff everywhere. Uh, this, um, this just generally makes it a bit more realistic. Um, in base game, when they were making it, there were a lot of engine limitations. So in a lot of cases, they kind of implied that there were more people, but you didn't in essentially always see them. So they had to pull a, pull a lot of uh, tricks to make that kind of stuff work. But yeah, IWS just increases them, because PCs can handle them, the friggin' PS3 couldn't. My god, does this run like absolute raw anus on a PS3. Anyway, uh, even like with, with all the tricks they added. So, yeah, this basically just adds the DLC to the Underwater Hideout, which is another one of the, um, one of the hideouts you can get in this one. Uh, incremental save. Now this is the one that's pretty much just there in case the thing crashes. I've done a few test runs. It will crash. It's got 90 mods running on it, for God's sake. It's gonna crash. <laughs> Alright. 
Next up is Wasteland Defense. Uh, this is the mod that basically got ripped off for Fallout 4, like to the point of even having a similar like green grid on your uh, on your stuff that you're putting down. They straight up took this mod and made it into just its own game, and they did it worse. You know, what what is that even? It's one of the main reasons that that I really really dislike Fallout 4 because. Uh, they ruined it. They, it was a terrible idea. They're like, let's take a mod that's sort of fun and creates interesting scenarios, but let's go ahead and make it really clunky and awkward to use and make it really boring. <laughs> and so they did. All right, then we have Jay Sawyer. Um, this is kind of partially implemented. It's kind of mixed in with uh, Project Nevada. But Jay Sawyer is kind of the official rebalance, more or less. Um, pretty much when they were releasing it, they had to make it a little bit easier than intended. So, for example, health had to be higher, uh, damage had to be lower, health uh, items had to heal more. So you pretty much never starved to death or anything else. Like, I think there was one time I had a character uh, uh, get dehydrated to death, which was simply because I had them sleep for like four days straight. <laughs> And uh, it just kind of triggers as soon as you, as soon as you stop sleeping. They're like, "Oh, I have died in my sleep." So, eh. and the cat is trying to cut me again. Well, that's unfortunate. But yeah, so this mod is amazing. Um, it's made by Jay Sawyer. He's the uh, one of the head guys that was uh, behind New Vegas. So it's a pretty darn fantastic rebalance. Underwater hideout, just another part of it. Uh, I will be skipping all of these intro bits in the future, by the way. I'm uh, just going to hop directly towards a already made character. Now, we're going to skip through this. Now, there's kind of funny little flavor text all over this for each of these, which I really, really appreciated when we got there. Uh, which one was the best one here? Yeah, this one's pretty darn funny. But they all say pretty much what they say. So strength is essentially your weapon handling and punching ability and how much you can carry. Perception is your inbuilt radar and your ability to notice weird stuff going on in dialogue and there's a lot of dialogue. So that's going to be an option. Uh, endurance is your health, your ability to not get addicted to stuff, your ability to accept different uh, augments and things like that. Uh, this is also especially going to be useful considering that um, uh, th with uh, Project Nevada, there's a bunch of cybernetic, uh, a bunch of additional cybernetic implants and stuff like that. It's really cool. Uh, charisma is your it affects a bunch of things too. It's basically your start. Okay, it's your starting speech. It's your companion stats. Uh, so basically, the higher this is, the more they can take, the more they deal. It's kind of like a weird scaling kind of thing, and then. You know, you get a few little extra things here and there in dialogue from it. Uh, this is also the um, uh, the hireling limit, more or less. So I'm going to leave it at uh, four. Uh, that'll be enough. Two followers is generally going to be enough for me. Um, but yeah, you can uh, with uh, with mods now. This anyone can be hired. This is your limit for how many you can hire. So it's uh, two points per person. And then I think. Uh, I think I think Rex and um, and Eddie are free, and then you get uh, Rex and Eddie are basically your flying robot and your dog. So intelligence is how many points you get upon leveling up, and uh, also affects your starting skills for um, well for anything intelligence related really. Um, but this one's really good because you can max out your stuff, and the overall level is lower. So I'm gonna go ahead and pump that up. Uh, agility is how fast you walk, how fast you run, uh, how many action points you have, and how quickly they deplete. That's going to want to go up too. And luck is exactly what it sounds like. Also, if it's anything six or above, you basically get infinite money once you hit Vegas. So, do the character that we're making, that's going to go away. Agility's fine where it is. Strength is going up. Intelligence is going up. And actually, no, his perception kind of sucks. There we go. That sounds about right. Yeah. 
And in case I didn't put it in the title, essentially we've established that Mr. Alphonse over there and then Night of Lotus Run is apparently into friggin' all the kinks. So his whole deal here is essentially he's, uh, he's showing up to Vegas. He's got only one goal in mind, and that goal is to get it on with a zombie. So all of these are going to have a different, uh, different goal, more or less. And, well, essentially this one's going to be pretty easy. This is just kind of to show off the general idea here. Let me go for a... there we go. That looks about right, more or less. Yep. Now, disposition... Uh, ends justify the means. We're gonna start with negative karma. Because he's a Lidician, that's how it goes. So now we're gonna go for unarmed. Uh, he got his fist fight perk right off the bat. And go for speech, because of course, and... We're gonna go for... Hmm... We're gonna go for medicine. I think we're going to go for medicine. There we go. Now, to explain what this mod does, uh, this is the role player's alternative start. Uh, essentially, this, based off of your uh, tag skills, your preferences, everything else, how you built your character, it just gives you a dump of items and a location that is fitting to the one that you just made. And in like 99% of cases, it's exactly what you want. Alright, so anything, so he's gonna start off with, uh, with some... more than likely gonna start off with some melee weapons. Um, I need to hit that. Alright. So traits, um, I have unlimited traits on, uh, just because some of these are gonna be kinda, kinda fun to see. Alright, so, first off, banned for life. Uh, he would start off vilified. I mean, he's probably showing up with, like, a... he's showing up on a lotus boat or whatever else. Everybody hates them. Uh, so he starts off not necessarily outright hostile, but vilified by everybody. So there's a chance, you know, they may try to to, to attack or whatever else. Now, um... Yeah, unarmed attacks do more damage. Hell yes. High value target. More than likely. Do... Get their step faster. Not necessarily needed... Skilled? Uh, yeah. Skilled is pretty awesome. You start off with extra skills, but then you get less experience. Um, hmm. Yeah, this is definitely worthwhile. Then a Wild Wasteland, because why not? Always take Wild Wasteland. There we go. Hated by everyone. Skip through most of those. Alright. Now, history... Hmm. Hmm. It's basically going to put him straight into one of these groups. And I'm just kind of assuming he came by himself, unless the uh, the one with the two tribal companions actually decides to work. So... What do we want to go for here? Politician? Yeah, I mean, that kind of sounds about right. Get extra charisma... Get extra barter. Uh, no. You get negative 10 to all combat skills, so maybe not. Um, sheriff. Faster equip speed, negative cost, plus 10. Oh, yeah. That sounds like a yes. So he just, he basically just pretended to be a cop and got in here. Uh, wealth. You know, he's got money to burn. He's, he's doing all right. Basically... I, I, kind of semi-noble from a pretty rich place. And, um, yeah, alright. Alternative start. Now, let's hope for not a crash, because uh, Sheriff is one of the ones that can crash. Um, I actually did already set all those. That is unnecessary. But yeah, it warns you just in case. It's pretty much if you go back through one of the menus and you don't select another option, it'll sometimes say that. But, uh, yeah, I, most of the, uh, most of the options in this, uh, turn out fine. Alright, looks like we start in Jacobstown. So, this is... alright. 
And yes, on hardcore mode, I meant to have another mod on here that does that permanently. Um, all right. So this is fine. Started, started me off with an energy pistol for some reason. So this is one of the modded in laser pistols, but we're going to go with uh, spike knuckles. And all right, got a hat, got a duster. We're just going to play it like this. Um, let's see, damage threshold is basically non-existent. Okay, so, <clears throat> damage threshold and damage resistance. Uh, here's how the combat system works, more or less. Uh, essentially, threshold is just your combined, um, combined defense from your items. Um, if you're hit in the head, it only counts your head item uh, with Project Nevada. But then each of these, you may notice the damage seems kind of low, but that's basically it's full damage. So for example, if I had metal armor and let's say it had 12 uh, damage resistance, uh, that would be reduced by about 80%. So this thing would only be doing two as opposed to seven with each shot. And your health, this seems a little bit higher than I expected it to be, although this is a very high endurance character. But like, for example, with punches here, it would take like six or seven punches to kill this guy. So he's not terribly strong and we don't have armor. No Decent armor, anyway. Uh, started off in Jacobstown. I'm not exactly going to get much done here. And again, his his goal is an easy one. Some of these are going to be a lot more difficult, but his goal is pretty easy, and that is basically just to get to the Gamora. I believe that's where our goal is. Now, I'm going to go around the north end here. Uh, that seems like it'll be a far easier way to get into Vegas. But pretty much right off the bat, we have a big fighting gauntlet down this mountain, possibly. It might be completely open. That's kind of one of the things I love about this. It's always, uh, always open. Like, there's always stuff going on somewhere. All right, so we have Sprint. That isn't there by default. It just allows for getting places faster. Uh, there's a slow-mo as well. We'll be using that instead of VATS, because personally, I'm not a fan of VATS. I prefer this kind of slow-mo system. Just because it's worse. It's kind of fun, you know? Fun that way. Alright. Now, as far as why I'm going here, even though it's not really my goal, I just want to pick up the snow globe right here. Another thing to show off, the snow globes look nicer. So there's that. Uh, there's mods to randomize their locations as well, so I might end up putting that in, although I never once found one of the randomized ones, so maybe not. So, uh, this guy doesn't seem like the sort to go rummaging through people's stuff. So, he stopped by, picked up a souvenir, and decided to leave. We'll say, though, 10 mile an hour running speed, that is pretty fast. Like, average... Average jogging speed is like 4 miles an hour, as I recall. Alright, so fast travel, by the way, is disabled. Essentially, everyone has to get everywhere manually. Um, I don't see one here, but there's essentially a sort of built-in fast travel alternative called Speedy Wheels. That's another mod. Uh, so, oh, crap. Okay, we're about to get some loot. We're about to get some friggin' good loot, because those guys are not going to stand a chance against those wasps. Yeah, so, hmm. Yeah, buddy, um, look. I think your problem just solved itself over there. Alright. So I need a ranged weapon, because I do not want to get close to that friggin' thing. Hey Marcus, would you like to pay us for that thing we totally had a part in? Okay, so my charisma is not high enough. I'm, I'm just showing off right here. Anyone can be hired. Uh, this is a combination of companion, share and recruit, and small talk. Uh, small talk allows this dialogue box to come up. A companion, share and recruit allows you to recruit anyone. However, um, the way that this works, uh, there is a, it, essentially there is a rating for each NPC. Um, 
that you need a certain amount of speech for. So some you have to pay, some you can just recruit. There's different stuff going on there. Right, I don't know where Marcus went, so we're just gonna go ahead and take this stuff before anybody else does. Because sometimes NPCs will just come and take things. And this is... this could not have started better. You know, just take it all. Take it all, repair it. And there's also the grenade hotkey. Ooh, and a sunset sarsaparilla thing. Handy. Yes, yes. Alright. So we are not going to need these again. Um, Alright, so yeah, like combined with these, this has 12, this has 3, so you get 15 off of that. Or, this one has 8, and it's not heavy. So it's better. That's just going to get sold. Uh, combat armor is going to work just fine, and hopefully can go to find this Marcus guy and get paid. Get paid. Uh, something else you might notice here. Um, the uh, the weapons are retextured. That's the weapon retexture project. I kind of went for slightly lower resolution versions, so we don't necessarily see the best ones, but oh well. Now, another thing here, uh, actually I'll show this off at the next opportunity. You may, no may notice um, the weapon being holstered and unholstered animations are different. That's also a mod. Uh, it's just improved first person animations. Uh, I have no friggin' idea where Marcus went and I'm not about to go through that loading door. So screw it. We'll be back if needed. I think he only gives you like a hundred bucks anyway. And inadvertently caused a future war with the NCR, but... You know, bad ending for this place. Such things will occur. Okay, what is going on over there? Oh, so this is another thing. Uh, First-person optics. Uh, basically, by default, uh, what would end up happening is you'd have this scope. It would just do an overlay. And uh, you would just have like a little, you know crosshair that takes up the entire screen, and what this thing does instead is it gives you proper optics and stuff, so it's pretty cool. I like it. Kind of lucked out being able to show that off right off the bat. Uh, it does add a little bit of jitter, but then again, a lot of things do. It's just a very jittery game. Unless you're running it on a friggin' supercomputer. But even then, it still jitters. It's just the engine for you. So, basically the plan is to just do this either until it's done or until first crash. I've got like 30 minutes left here, so... Got a little bit of music. I... Oh, crap. What's coming for me? Alright, crouch, slow-mo... That might seem like overkill, but you'll see. Uh, basically, I do not want to be fighting them like this right now. This guy sucks with rifles. Alright. Um, let's just use this thing. Actually, no. They're low enough to be finished off, I think. I have a third person to hopefully avoid being snuck up on. Actually, this armor should be good enough to protect against them. It should be fine. I guess I think I'm just panicking over nothing. There was one of the mods earlier that I... Oh, s nope. 
Nope. That's kind of one of the things I was worried about. Where is it? Where is it? We're just gonna sneak over here. So why am I scared of the giant wasp things? Well, aside from the fact that they're giant wasp things, uh, essentially they completely bypass armor. Uh, they basically hit you with a poison that will kill you unless you have anti-poison. And uh, that's about it. You know, it's a bit of a problem. I have a tendency to hurt a bit. That's kind of the main takeaway from that situation. As you saw there, I have four people armed with, well, slightly crappier versions of the same stuff I have on right now, had absolutely no hope in hell. Uh, so the four of them ended up losing to the wasps, and those wasps ended up losing to... Oh, okay. You wanna go, cow? You wanna go? Yeah, fisted in the mouth. So, okay, a note on the AI of the wildlife. Uh, basically, in most cases, unless they're overtly hostile, like these uh, these insects here. Okay, yeah, that thing still hurt. Uh, the giant mantises hurt a fair bit. Uh, there's slightly smaller versions as well. But those ones can still apparently get through armor. That's a bad thing. Um, a couple of those, and one of these. That'll be enough to, uh, heal up a bit. Um, the food can make you sick if it's crappy. That's another one of the rebalances. So, essentially anything with preservatives in it is a bit more valuable. Now, unfortunately, that whole, um banned from the wasteland or whatever it was called thing that's supposed to start you off with two followers and get you vilified. Mostly it just gets you vilified. Um, I've never actually, uh, actually no, I've seen one time that it spawns in. Yeah, that they bothered spawning in, but it's just a little bit broken. I'm not really sure what caused the spawning in because I never even changed it. It just only worked once. Now that mine right there has some cool stuff in it. However, it also has the biggest wasp in the game, so we're going to go ahead and leave that alone. Not that Lance here, or Alphonse here, would know that. He's just, uh, you know, he's just going to uh, get it on with a zombie, so. Oh, crap, no, no, no. Alright, nope. Mm. Here's the deal. Alright, got some scratches on him. Nope, nope, nope. Pretty sure this run's dead right now. So that's that. So he didn't exactly succeed. Uh, unfortunately, he got a really bad start, and uh, that's where this run's gonna end. Uh, unfortunately, and fittingly focused on his crotch. Anyway, um, yeah, if you have suggestions or whatnot else, just uh, let me know. And yeah. Actually, you know what? Hmm. Nah. Yeah, if you have suggestions or whatever else, just let me know. Kind of curious here real quick if, uh... If he could have gotten away. Probably couldn't have. <clears throat> but if he had decided to punch the thing. Medics, whiskey. Punch the bee.
There we go. And I think the bee might have died too, because he died doing a power attack. And that's the end of that. Alright. See you next time, and yeah, let me know if you have suggestions for characters that hopefully will survive a bit better.